Hello and welcome to Baiju's exam prep IAS. Let's get started and look into our daily quiz. Let's look into the first question. Which of the following statements is the best description of Project Genetics? It was a United States Air Force program designed to launch surveillance balloons over the Soviet Union to take aerial photographs and collect intelligence. It was the first major military operation of USA to make extensive use of space-enabled capabilities in Libya. It was a cyber attack on Iran to wreak havoc on government and civilian infrastructure and disrupt critical systems. It was the first US program to put humans in space. Which among these statements is the best description of Project Genetics? The answer to this is, it was a United States Air Force program designed to launch surveillance balloons over the Soviet Union to take aerial photographs and collect intelligence. So what are we speaking about? We are speaking about Project Genetics. This was initiated immediately after the World War II where the US military wanted to know what was happening in China, what was happening in the East Europe as well as in Soviet Union. So what did they do? They made sure that they have these spy balloons that went in and around these areas so that they could capture the images and also intelligence. So Project Genetics was taken during the period of World War II by the United States of America basically to get the intelligence. Why are we discussing about it? That is because this article on the Hindu makes a reference to the spy balloons which is why we have spoken about project genetics. So what is this spy balloon? Why are we discussing about it? That is because we have the United States of America's military which has shot down a suspected spy balloon from China. So there have been ample number of examples in the past as well where Japan has also used spy balloons United States of America has also used spy balloons and now United States of America feels that China has used the spy balloon so they have shot down this spy balloon what is the advantage of the spy balloon why is spy balloon used despite having the well advanced satellite system that is because of multiple reasons if you have to launch a satellite it takes a huge amount of money and at the same time it will require launchers as well so the expense for the satellite would be far in excess but when it comes to these balloons it can be used for a specific purpose and it can be withdrawn as well if it is a satellite there is requirement of huge investment of money but for the balloons huge amount of money is not required when it comes to the satellites yes we would be able to take up the images but what we require is clarity what we require is well re high resolution images as well if it is the balloons we would be able to get much better resolution since it is at a lower height we would be able to get much better resolution and it would also be able to take the image of that particular area as well which is why these countries prefer these spy balloons over what is called as the satellite. Now let's look into the next practice question. With respect to Comptroller and Auditor General of India, which of the following statements is are correct? He is an agent of the President and conducts audit of expenditure on behalf of the President. He is not eligible for further office either under the Government of India or of any state after he ceases to hold his office. Jawaharlal Nehru told the Constituent Assembly that he saw the CAG as probably the most important officer in the Constitution of India. Which of the statements are correct? The answer to this is two only. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Hindu makes a reference to the Comptroller and Auditor General of India. Let us try and understand what are these statements. When you look into the first statement, the first statement is wrong. Why? That is because he is not the agent of the president. He is the agent of the parliament and all the audits of the expenditure will be done on behalf of the parliament and not on behalf of the president. So the first statement is wrong because it is not president but instead it is the parliament. So the first statement is wrong. When you look into the second statement, he is not eligible for further office either under the government of India or of any state after he ceases to hold his office. This statement is right. 
when it comes to the comptroller and auditor general or any institute or any authority for that matter the person if he is holding a designated constitutional office and if the statement is attached to that particular authority or the person this person would not be eligible for any further office with government of india or government of any respective state why is this important let me give you an example we have one of the instances where one of the scams the 2g scam was unfolded by the comptroller and auditor general if this authority is given permission for further working with the government of india he would be enticed that the government would give him further employment opportunities he would be enticed that he would be able to work for the government of india for the sake of money and for the sake of employment so he may not do justice to this particular role so this person said is charged on the consolidated fund of india and at the same time he is not eligible for reappointment primarily because he will not be enticed by the government he has to act independently he should be able to take a call independently he should be able to unearth the scams as well that is why his salary would be charged on the consolidated fund of india and for this functionary to remain independent he is not eligible for further office so the second statement is right when you look into the third statement jawaharlal nehru told the constituent assembly that he saw this statement is wrong why because this statement was made by dr b r ambedkar ji so it was dr b r ambedkar ji who made the statement that cag happens to be the most important officer in the constitution of india and it is not jawaharlal nehru and do note as part of the assignment you have to put on the comment section does cag audit municipal institutions yes or no and if it is yes why does it do it if it is no why doesn't it do it please put it on the comment section so please put on the comment section does the cag audit municipal institutions yes or no now let's look into the next practice question consider the following statements with respect to national center for biological sciences ncbc is a research center specializing in biological research and is located in hyderabad it is part of tata institute of fundamental research under the department of atomic energy which of the statements given above is are correct the answer to this is two only why have we taken this practice question because this article on the indian express makes a reference to national center for biological sciences the national center for biological sciences where is it located it is located in bengaluru in karnataka and not in hyderabad telangana so remember we have the national center for biological sciences it is located in bengaluru it is located in karnataka and this happens to be a research center which specializes in biological research so what do we understand by biological research this institution focuses on fundamental research from diverse fields of biology including biochemistry biophysics bioinformatics neurobiology cellular organization and signaling genetics and development theory and modeling of biological systems ecology and evolution so on and so forth so this is basically looking into interdisciplinary approach in all those frontier areas of biology so this will basically identify some of the important aspects of biology and on the basis of it it will also take interdisciplinary research as well and this institution is part of tata institute of fundamental research under the department of atomic energy so the second statement is right since the second statement is right the first statement is wrong the answer to this would be b now let's look into the next practice question which of the following statements is are correct muons are unstable elementary particles and are heavier than electron and neutrinos muons are much more deeply penetrating than x rays muons can be used to image magma chambers to predict volcanic eruptions muography can be used to investigate the conditions of nuclear reactors damaged by nuclear disasters which of the statements are correct the answer to this is 1 2 3 and 4 why have we taken this practice question 
because this article on the Indian Express makes a reference to muons. What are these muons? These are nothing but elementary particles. They also have the negative electric charge as well. So muons are subatomic particles that drain down from the space and this has a mean lifetime of about 2.2 microseconds. So this is a light charge elementary particle which been half belonging to leptons. Many characteristics of muon and electron are similar but the muon's mass is 207 times more than the electron mass. Therefore, the muon path length is 1000 times longer than for electron and muon lifetime is around 2.2 microseconds. These are some of the important facts with respect to muons. Then we have something called as muography, which is conceptually similar to an X-ray, was first used in archaeology in the late 1960s when the Nobel laureate American experimental physicist Louis Alvarez joined hands with eptologists to study for hidden chambers in the pyramid of Khafre in Giza. So basically, the muography is conceptually similar to that of an X-ray but capable of scanning much larger and wider structure. Why? That is because they have a much powerful penetration structure. And what are the applications? Scientists use myography to look inside the Fukushima nuclear reactors after the 2011 earthquake and tsunami in Japan. Myography is also being used by researchers to analyze Mount Vesuvius, a volcano in Italy. According to a 2022 study, with the help of this technique, researchers are also trying to understand the finer details of volcano's internal structure. And myography is also being used by civil engineering structures such as dams and their surroundings for safety and risk prevention purposes. So these are some of the applications of myography. So we have to understand about muons and the applications of muons to understand the importance of this topic. Now let's look into the next practice question. Participatory notes are associated with which one of the following? Consolidated Fund of India, Foreign Institutional Investors, Con United Nations Developmental Program, Kyoto Protocol. The answer to this is Foreign Institutional Investors. So what are these participatory notes? These are also known as the P notes. What are these? These are the instruments issued by the registered foreign institutional investors. So these participatory notes are issued for the overseas investors, which means those investors who are not from India, but are investors from some other country who want to invest in the stock markets in India without being registered under the SEBI. So basically, this idea of participatory note is related to foreign institutional investors. This happens to be a previous year question from the year 2007. Now let's look into the fact of the day. The fact of the day for today's discussion is North Star. When we speak about North Star, what is it? It happens to be a star that appears almost directly above the Earth's rotational axis. This star is also called by the name Polaris. It is also called by the name Pole Star and it is a very bright star around 2500 times more luminous than the Sun. It is part of constellation Ursa Minor and is around 323 light years away from the Earth. What is the importance of this North Star? Since Polaris is less than 1 degree away from the North Celestial Pole almost in direct line with the Earth's rotational axis, it appears to sit motionless in the northern sky with all other stars appearing to rotate about it. Polaris seems to have been first charted by the Roman mathematician and astronomer Ptolemy who lived from 85 to 165 BC while there is some evidence that the star was also used for navigation in late antiquity. Then we have Christopher Columbus on his first transatlantic voyage of 1492 had to correct his ship bearings for the circle described by the pole star above the pole and the star became an invaluable aid to the European colonists seeking out far off lands across the sea. Another important pointer is upon crossing the equator to the south, the North Star is lost over the horizon and hence talk being useful navigational tool in the southern hemisphere. So it is a very good navigational tool in the northern hemisphere and if we cross the equator, it may not be of much use. This is the North Star 
when it comes to the geography. However, in the general metaphor, we recently have two examples where this word North Star is generally used. We have the Chief Justice of India, D. Y. Chandrachur, who described the basic structure of the constitution laid down by the Supreme Court in 1973, Keshwaran Bharti judgment, as the North Star that guides and gives certain direction to the interpreters and implementers of the constitution when the path ahead is convoluted. Now we have Vice President Jagdeep Danka, who said Parliament is the North Star of democracy, a place of discussion and deliberation to realize the aspirations and dreams of the people. So what is this? This metaphor. When we speak about the star, that is the North Star, what is it? It is usually permanent in nature. It is constant as well. This means that this particular star leads and provides direction in the Northern Hemisphere. So if it is used in the general metaphor, North Star basically means it is that authority or an institution which is able to lead and provide the direction. So on one side, the judiciary's judgment of Keshavananda Bharati is the North Star, says the Chief Justice of India. Then we have the Vice President who goes on to say that the North Star happens to be the Parliament. The Parliament is the power given by the people of the country. Since it is the people of the country who have given this power to the Parliament, it is the Parliament which is the North star says the vice president of India. It is this that we have to understand with respect to this topic. So this is it for today. Thank you for watching. All the best.